Okay, how are things? Everything's good, yes. How are you? All is well. So, what's up right now? I just woke up a while ago for this class. <laughs> so, how are you coping with the with the classes, with these classes in particular, women in media? Yes, it's going good. I think that um, two hours of classes are going to so after one class, one day of the break, hoti hai na, that helps to catch up on the readings, etc. And because it's a lot of classes in the morning, so it's hard to wake up every day early. But the break is so much, it helps. Okay, but, but you're not traveling to be and you to take the classes, right? For face-to-face -face classes, you will start even earlier. Yes, Miss. Miss, वो फिर उसकी आदत हो जाती है ना. अभी उस वो break है, summer break है, तो वो हर सा catch up करने में मुश्किल हो रही है. Okay, good. So, how are you? So, did you guys read today's, uh, uh, you know, this paper that I had shared in Google Classroom? Ms. Jo, you shared it yesterday. It was a YouTube link. Tha. Uh, no, no, no. That YouTube link was for the last class because students suggested that I should upload uh, what we discuss in classroom. So uh, what I shared yesterday was just what we had discussed in the last classroom. So I'm basically uh, talking about, um, I will share again. Uh, all the readings are already there in Google Classroom. Can you see this classroom? Yes, 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 we can. Okay. What I posted yesterday was just this online class we had conducted two days back. Yes. So I uploaded it on YouTube and I shared it with you. Uh, just in case anybody uh, had internet issues or had not joined for whatever reason. So it just says online classes. This, these are just the uploads of uh, videos recorded during the session. Okay, underneath you can see it says university rules, course briefing, and uh, then you see all the topics that we have discussed on different dates. It says representation in Pakistani films. We discussed it on 22nd July, we discussed censorship of visual pleasure and visual pleasure by Laura Malve, partly and uh, partly on Pakistani film on 24th July. Uh, we discussed uh, the famous article on uh, rape in Pakistani films on 27th July. And then we discussed black skin, white masks. We discussed story of Jesui Martinique. This uh, story was about a black woman marrying a white woman, a white male. Uh, it was about interracial marriages. We discussed on 29th July. We discussed Orientalism on August 3rd, and it says mommies, matriarchs, and other controlling images. This is for today. So that's, that's what I'm talking about, because all these readings are already there in Google Classroom. And uh, if you keep going down, you will find misogyny, phylogyny. Uh, we will discuss this on Friday. And uh, if you attended the first session, you would know that I briefly described what was phylogyny as opposed to misogyny uh, in, in the first session. So in future, you can just uh, look at the content in Google Classroom and you would instantly know what we are discussing in next class. It says Patricia Hill Collins, Mommy's Matriarchs and other controlling images of primarily black women. 
this chapter is from this book, Black Feminist Thought. So it has uh, it has a number of uh, uh, you know it um, it has lots of uh, chapters on what black women think about themselves and how they think they have been perceived historically. So you can say that uh, this literature uh, is as old as is literature uh, by white women, because most of this literature started appearing in 1960s, right? So this is a book by Patricia Hill Collins, but the book was definitely not published in 1960s, but later because it's a compi compilation of papers by different uh, black women, or if not black women, by authors who had written on black women. So I have picked up only, this book was published in 2000, and I think they have published, uh, they may have published other editions of this book. Right, so it, it's, it's only focusing on black women. It, it says social construction of black feminist thought and uh, a few other topics. So I have picked only one topic from here. Uh, the book is divided in three parts and this topic for today is from the second part. Uh, it is mommies, matriarchs and other controlling images. So it, it just uh, describes uh, stereotypes of uh, black women and discusses those stereotypes. Okay, so here is the chapter that I have selected for today. And uh, this is what I asked. So anyone in class who tried reading this chapter? No one? G, anybody? Hello. Yes. Walaikum salam, Myra. Did you try reading the uh, the article for today? Uh, no, miss. I didn't today, unfortunately. I was a little unwell. Okay. Uh, I was just saying that uh, try try reading uh, uh, these topics. Uh, you know it normally helps uh, during the discussion. So what we'll do today, uh, uh, I will partly discuss it and I would like that each one of you try at least um, discussing one of the paras from these chapters. Okay, so, okay. Okay, so during uh, the discussion, we'll, um, I will ask one or the other and I think we'll go in uh, alphabetical order and we'll try discussing what this chapter is saying. So I'll ask each one of you one by one to at least read one para and try to describe what that para is saying, okay? Uh, it says mommies, matriarchs and other controlling images. So uh, mommy is uh, an image of a black woman. So if you've been watching uh, TV serials, uh, or films uh, that were showing black women in mommy's roles or a woman working at a white house, white family's house, you would see that uh, this woman got a job in which she played uh, as, uh, uh, she acted as a babysitter or a mommy for children of white families. So mommy is a controlling image and matriarch is another controlling image it's the opposite of patriarch, as it seems. So this also becomes a controlling image. And uh, the chapter on the whole describes why uh, these images are created and how these images help in maintaining power structures uh, between white and black communities and also in society on the whole, right? So apart from these two, there are many other controlling images that this chapter discusses. Uh, if we only read this um, first, uh, you know, uh, this first par paragraph right here, it's a quotation by 
true dear Harris, we would uh, understand what it means by controlling images. Uh, Trudier Harris actually, Patricia Hill Collins is quoting Trudier Harris, she, and Trudier Harris had written this quote. So she's beginning through by this quote, she says, called matriarch, called emasculator, called hot mama. These are all images of black women. People have been calling, by, calling them by these different names and uh, sometimes they call them sister, pretty baby, auntie, mommy, and girl. Called unwed mother. I think uh, this second sentence here is something that you may have come across uh, as a dialogue in different films. For example, a black man or somebody else is talking to a black woman and he would address her by this name, girl, right? So it says that uh, girl is a controlling image, sister is a controlling image, that is a title, a character would give to a black woman uh, in many films. Sometimes black women are, are called unwed mothers, sometimes they are called welfare recipients, because unwed mothers, if they are teenagers, they would hardly be capable of supporting their children. So they are producing children, but they do not have the resources to support their children. So unwed mother becomes another stereotype or a title or a name that actually describes uh, the position of this black woman. Then because they cannot support their children, they will become welfare recipients because America being an economy will support these unwed mothers. Uh, it will happen in many other countries as well. For example, in Canada, if uh, people have children and they are not working, the system of government will provide support to them. It will also happen in other countries like United States and Australia and many other countries in Europe that the system will provide support to unwed mothers or women who are not working or just supporting or not supporting their families, okay? So the system will support these women. Because of this, they, they will be, get this title of welfare recipient. It means the system is providing them, these titles are not positive uh, as such, they are uh, pointing to people who become burden on the system or who are considered morally inferior or inferior socially, politically, and otherwise, okay? So these women will be called welfare recipient or inner city consumer. Inner city consumer also implies that somehow they are... Uh, they are not superior enough, they are not uh, equal to the imperial white man. Okay, so these different uh, titles are actually um, uh, controlling images that determine the status of black woman or brown woman in a Western society and particularly uh, an American society. You can say this status applies to black women anywhere in the white world or in West. The black American women, and after this, Trudel Harris says the black American woman has had to admit that white, that while nobody knew the troubles she saw, everybody, his, uh, uh, everybody means her brother and his dog felt qualified to explain to her, even to herself, which means that women, if they are not behaving like women, black women in particular, the, her brother or dog would tell her who she is. He would explain her to herself and would sometimes say behave like women or would call her pretty baby, sister, etc. And all these images actually describe the status of that woman. So. 
any comment on what I have said so far? Any comment or you may give the comment from your position if you like, which means you are in Lahore right now. So your position would be anything from a Pakistani to a Punjabi to a Lahori or, or any other that you, could, that you would think describes your position or your identity. So the yes. question is, yes, can, can you um, do, do these uh, stereotypes or uh, titles look familiar in any manner? Yes, Miss. Um, Mrs. Snoor of Shahir. Miss, jo aapne last me mentioned ki hai ke unka jo bhai hota hai ya phir any other figure in their family ya phir someone around them, they feel qualified enough to explain them ke unka role kya hai or unki uh, basically what they have to do and what their identity is. I think that's that also applies to hair as well. Matlab jo thik hai May I am aware enough to shut someone up if someone you know tries to control me. But a lot of times, just now, Pakistan is coming to that usually, the men do it. They control the women. They are telling them that they don't want to do this, they don't want to do that. So it's, this is very similar to how women are treated here as well. Like, their roles are defined kar diye jate hai, and Men who are the breadwinners of the house, they control them. They tell them and restrictions are in their So there's not a lot women can do about you know, their lives. Okay. So not doing actually define. It's, it's also like one thing I noted is with all these particular names and titles in when it comes to analyzing the relationship of this label and the woman, it's never with herself independently and it's always linked to something else like unwed mother or a welfare recipient or even pretty baby. It's linked to a different perspective and to a different individual who has enforced this label on these women. So. As a result, I think that reinforces what you had pointed out about these being controlling images because the women don't have their own agency, even in title. It's always linked to another man, a family, a woman, a system. Very nice. Yes. yes. That's so, very good. so you are saying that these titles actually reflect binary relationships or dichotomy in, in which there would be someone to control the relationship and uh, in the binary, these titles are actually reflecting the position of the other. So if black yeah. woman is the other, her, her other uh, would be white community or white woman, right? White so, community or white woman or a man, a child, anything but herself. Right. Very good. So all of these titles are actually reflecting on different kind of... Um, yes, I can't hear you. You don't uh, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay. So I'm saying all these titles are actually reflecting different kind of uh, binary relationships in which one person is in charge of or one community is in charge of uh, binary relationship. And it's, it actually creates an interlocking system uh, of relationship or interlocking system of power relations between two types of people or two types of uh, communities or between one and the other. Okay. I, I do feel that Rudier Horace Harris is a bit harsh because uh, Trudier Harris says whether the brother or the dog feels qualified to explain to her, even to herself. So I think it's a bit harsh, though it's uh, reflecting on reality. And most of the times we, we don't use uh, uh, such language in academia, but apparently this is, uh, uh, this is uh, used, dog is used to reflect on reality symbolically. Okay, so uh, Patricia Hill Collins says that intersecting, intersecting oppressions of race, class, gender, and sexuality. 
so it implies that all these titles that uh, we have discussed in the earlier part are actually uh, reflecting on oppression of black and white uh, of white ra black race white white community it's also reflecting on class system it's also reflecting on gender differences and uh, the role one has uh, in terms of sexuality so these could not uh, be uh, discussed without powerful ideological justifications right so she's saying that uh, these ideologies or these titles uh, have some kind of power relations and uh, they are created for the purpose uh, she says that uh, black women's assertiveness and their use of every expression of racism uh, actually ref uh, launches a number of assaults against the fabric of inequality and have been consistent multifaceted threat to the status quo so if black women try to assert themselves uh, as women or as the other this their assertiveness will be used as uh, their negative characteristic against them right so which means that if uh, if a woman is a matriarch uh, and black women can be matriarch because their culture allows them to be matriarch this uh, matriarchal quality will become a negative uh, characteristic against them so because their assertiveness will be taken as something unfeminine and uh, when they become unfeminine the title will be used as a punishment because this title reflects some kind of challenge to the status quo okay so portraying african american women as stereotypical mommies matriarch welfare recipients and hot mamas helps justify us black women's oppression so basically she is saying that these uh, titles actually help in uh, ass in asserting oppression in various forms and uh, so black women actually created uh, these um, black feminist thought or they wrote all all these articles in order to challenge these uh, titles and uh, to evoke uh, discussions on these topics uh it says that uh, black womanhood or uh, ideology of domination actually uh, uh creates these images and uh, these uh, images have special meanings they describe uh, they, they are used by you know they are used as major instrument of power by elite groups who exercise their powers and they manipulate black womanhood in various ways uh it's uh, these um, these titles actually help in uh, exploiting black womanhood or black women's status in society and uh, these are used to objectify women so in the in this paragraph actually she is trying to give um, a different meaning to object objectification because she says that uh, objectivity or objectification helps in uh, they the function as a disguise or mystification of objective social relations because these titles actually uh, in terms of controlling uh, their in, uh, in terms of controlling social relations uh, they mystify real purpose and they serve as uh, stereotypes serve as, serve as disguising titles that actually do not let you look at uh, imbalance in power relations or economic imbalance uh, in the status of white work, uh, white woman and uh, black working woman so these uh, titles actually help in uh, determining imbalance in social relations okay so she is saying that uh, these controlling images are designed to make racism sexism 
poverty and other forms of social injustice appear to be natural, normal, inevitable, because if you call a woman mommy or a matriarch, you are actually trying to tell her what is her job as a mommy. And uh, if she does not perform uh, that job properly, which means that if she's not uh, appearing warm to children of white families where she's serving as a mommy, she will be punished for not being warm or motherly to the white children. Uh, okay. And uh, which, may, which also implies that because she's serving white families, she will be away from her own home. And uh, by being away from her own home, she would have difficulty providing same kind of uh, motherhood to her own black children. Okay, so it just says this, these controlling images are designed to make racism, sexism, poverty and other forms of social injustice appear natural. Because when you tell her, oh, you are a mommy, you should be warm with, with the children, you are actually talking about her warmth with white children. You're not talking about her warmth with her own children because she's absent from her own home. So in this way, when you uh, emphasize on, on her warmth uh, for white children, you make look uh, everything natural and normal and inevitable because uh, warmth is part of her job as a mommy. Uh, it does say that uh, these, these uh, uh, even when the initial conditions that foster controlling images disappear, such images prove remarkably tenacious because they not only subjugate black women, but are key in maintaining intersecting oppression. So disappearing only implies that slavery has finished. Okay, so initial conditions that were fostering these controlling images in the past, a hundred years ago or 200 years ago, they have changed. These uh, black women in the American society or anywhere else in the Europe, they are no longer slaves. Uh, initial conditions have changed, but uh, what she mentions later in this chapter is deference. Are you familiar what deference means? I think we have, we did discuss it in one of our uh, classes that uh, deference actually, uh, it's not difference as such. Uh, deference actually uh, means internalization of black community uh, of their original status. If you look here, it says deference is the condition of submitting to the uh, espoused legitimate influence of one's superior. So uh, though slavery has ended, the influence of the superior continues. And in this case, superior is the white man or the white woman. So deference actually implies that you would internalize uh, that you are black, you are inferior. And uh, despite slavery have, have, have ended, uh, you would continue internalizing that white man is superior and white woman is superior. So deference actually is an expression of internalization of the superiority of the other and internalizing your own inferiority. Okay, so she says that deference uh, or gesture of respect for white superior continues. So uh, in other words, uh, it is expected that uh, white uh, uh, white men should be respected or considered superior uh, by a expression of deference. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay, we did discuss it in one of uh, our past classes because I remembered that somebody mentioned one of uh, uh, somebody mentioned one of you mentioned a TV show in which uh, white and black were sharing the house and black child kept on asserting that he's my business partner, we are equal, while mother of the black child uh, continuing, continued showing deference or respect for the white. Yes. 
That was a show and with an E and I think um, Ikra in our class mentioned it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, can you remember the title of the show? And with an E. And with an E. That. And with an E. That was the name of the show. It's on Netflix. Okay. All right. So I, I believe that you understand what we, what I mean by deference. Okay. Honestly, um, okay. yes, to add to this, there is a book by Catherine Socket, which was also later adapted into a movie called The Help. So that also touches upon the role of the matriarchs in societies and mommies, particularly in segregated yeah. um, US America. Then there's also Gone with the Wind that shows the stereotypical role of mommies for white children. Uh, the Help the movie was a lot of But no, it looks like a white woman is explaining the narrative, which is something that I had a problem with. And even with Gone with the Wind, it was very white woman centric. Uh-huh. Like uh, the role of uh, the mammy is just pushed aside. Like in in a lot of spaces, she's just seen as a medium of labor and and someone who was simply expected to sacrifice everything about her life. In fact, her sacrifice in Gone with the Wind is glorified in a lot of ways. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Are you saying that? Uh, sacrifice of uh, white woman or sacrifice of black woman? Uh, the sacrifice of black woman, men, uh, miss. Okay. So you're saying that this film actually glorifies sacrifice of black woman. Uh, this is a 1939 film. Okay. I just wanted to check dates off. Gone with the Wind, it says 1939. And uh, the other is uh, hell or the hell. What's the complete title? Message the hell. Okay. So the hell. Uh, Are you familiar with the date of, it says the hell 2020. Is that the one? Miss, it's the hell. Miss, it's the help. H-E-L-P. So I think this was 2015, probably. Uh, I think. Oh, no, 11. Sorry. Yes, Miss. Yes. So apparently these films are about 80 years apart. Okay. It says 2011. And this one says... 1939. Uh, so you can say probably more or less, more or less 80 years apart. Uh, between, uh, in between 80 years, uh, you would find something known as Jim Crow laws. Are you familiar with Jim Crow laws? Uh, yes, Miss. Okay, so um, can you explain it a bit? Uh, can you try explaining what these laws uh, demanded? Uh, these laws are about, you know, like. Uh, it just say Ku Klux Klan, black codes, Ku Klux Klan, Jim Crow laws expand, etc. on the left hand side. So if you were watching Birth of a Nation, you would find Ku Klux Klan uh, performing an important role in that film. Uh, so all I meant that Jim Crow laws emphasize the segregation between white part of America and black America. Uh, And these laws desired that black people do not enter certain parks in the city because those parks were for white people. And uh, because these laws were demanding segregation of white and black, uh, it also implied that if a white man or woman entered a bus, she could actually ask she could actually ask a black man or woman to leave seed for him or her. 
so basically it's it's talking about you know like um, it's uh, pointing to continuation of the difference despite america being um, a society that uh, you know where where the constitution says that black and white are equal so you can see that in 1960s in america jim crow laws were actually emphasizing on segregation of black and white communities so equality probably did not mean uh, proper e equality as such okay so i'm so all i'm saying that uh, these uh, stereotypes are uh, created to uh, emphasize difference uh, they are used as instrument of power and all these stereotypes have a special meaning that help elite groups in exercising their power uh, these uh, these as ideas these uh, controlling images or stereotypes uh, help in uh, imposing power on black womanhood they help in exploiting uh, their uh, uh, their status and it says here that uh, hazel carby says these stereotypes not only re they they do not reflect a reality they function as a disguise or mystification of objective mm -hmm. social relations so calling somebody a mommy or a matriarch or sister or welfare recipient is not essentially a reality of the person who is called by this title it's it just helps in uh, emphasizing racism sexism poverty of the other uh, and it helps in emphasizing uh, superiority of the other it says that uh, black women are extremely important in maintaining this difference or or in maintaining Uh, oppression so the status of the other is emphasized by emphasizing these stereotypes because as you said earlier that the, uh, the minute the binary appears the one in that binary becomes weak and the other becomes stronger in terms of objectification of black women through these uh, stereotypes it says that uh, stereotypes help in maintaining the status of the other maintaining images of black women as the other provide ideological justification for race gender and class oppression uh, these ideas uh, emphasize differences and uh, you can see that right here she has mentioned the binaries of white black uh, these titles uh, refer to this binary of black and white these also refer to the binary of male and female and these also reflect on the binary of reason and emotion where you would call uh, black people have, uh, are very emotional white where and white people are logical the minute you say that you are emphasizing on the binary of culture black have culture of matriarchs so calling them matriarchs or mommy would, would appear only natural uh, this this is reflecting on binary of fact and opinion uh, so all these titles are actually opinions that do not essentially mean that black culture is inferior or by having this this kind of matriarchs black become inferior so she is saying that just like any other binary this binary helps in asserting power relations uh, so difference is uh, defined as oppositional uh, whites and blacks males and females and they are not uh, these two parts are essential uh, to complement each other and uh, mm. as complementary this they keep on emphasizing on the power of the superior okay 
So this actually uh, makes facts very obscure. Objectification is central to this process of oppositional difference. In binary thinking, one element is objectified as the other. So here she is uh, saying that uh, these uh, stereotypes help in separation of the knowledge of self, which means that uh, it helps in asserting uh, knowledge of self of the white man or white woman, right? So the minute uh, the white man calls or white woman calls a black woman a matriarch, it helps in asserting separation of herself from the known object. So within this binary, uh, one is known object and the other is the subject. So the subject is separating her knowledge of her own self with the knowledge of the object. And uh, in this way, uh, separating or knowing of self becomes prerequisite for the white or Western society. Is this clear? Is this point clear that for knowing yourself, it's important. is it clear that for knowing your own self, it's important to emphasize the difference of yes. the other? Yes, it's clear. Okay. Miss, here is point that to, to basically distinguish between two people, why do you have to, so why does it, why is it at the expense of exploiting the other person? So this would basically apply. Yes, can you repeat your question, please? Uh, the question was that here she is uh, saying that within the stereotype or within the binary, separation of knowing of self is important. Uh, you know, like uh, you are separating yourself from the known object. For example, if uh, if somebody is told you are a woman. So the one in power is actually separating himself as a man. So separating knowledge of self from the known object is, is done, right? So a male would emphasize knowledge of his own masculinity, right? So he would know himself as masculine the minute he says, you are a woman. So known object is separated. Uh, from known self. Okay, so the binary is knowing oneself and knowing the other as the object. Uh, this is this is something. Okay, so this is something which is happening between the genders and between the races and classes. And she mentions sexuality. So the emphasis is on these four things while she's writing this article and these four things actually help in asserting on uh, power relations between the two. Okay, because she said earlier that uh, uh, knowing self is important, separation of knowing self is important to knowing the object. Right, so man would know that his masculinity is important for emphasizing on woman's femininity. So where one will be the object and one would knowingly separate the object from his own understanding of himself. So in this part, she's, uh, Patricia Hill Collins is only saying that uh, these uh, controlling images are created in order to control and exploit uh, the situation of the binary opposition, right? And um, this helps women's subsequent objectification by men. And uh, black, per black communities objectification by white community. So she's saying that in um, creating these, these kind of controlling images, uh, she's saying that uh, defining people of color as less human, animalistic, and more natural denies African and Asian people's subjectivity. 
So basically, she says that uh, showing uh, when you create this kind of images, you are trying to show that the other is not human or less human. The other is animalistic. The other, it's uh, it's it's uh, natural for the other to be inhuman or natural for the other to be animalistic. So in this way, she, she says that political economy of death domination is asserted because the other appears less human and animalistic. And the, these characteristics appear natural to the position of the other. Okay, uh, it says that domination involves attempts to objectify subordinate group. And uh, here she is saying that uh, an object, uh, as objects, one's reality is defined by the other. And identity is also created by the other. So this binary of the other helps in uh, helps one part to assert his power on the other, right? So in any, any binary relationship, the other will be inferior, inhuman, or less human. And in this way, she says that black women appear as mules, right? Mules are the world. That's what she says here. So this, this object, objectification actually helps in uh, showing or in determining their lesser uh, lesser status, and it says that when you call them girls, you actually uh, it helps you uh, treat your employees like children. So when you do not call somebody by the name or you call somebody girl, it gives you us the power to treat them as your children. So when they are, when you are treating them as children or inferior, uh, you are showing them as uh, somebody with lesser capabilities as humans or, uh, you know, like this objectification uh, helps the other disappear, which means that uh, the other disappears and superior is the one who is using the power to call the other as a girl, pretty mama, and this kind of thing, because then you are locking the other within that image. All right. And then it says uh, that, uh, gee, please. Miss, I wanted to say that this sounds uh, very similar to how men infantilize um, women in order to uh, to sort of assert their power or superiority. There's, a, there's this very famous play called The Doll's House. And um, in that play, like the, the female is a married woman who even has children, but her husband constantly keeps on calling her my, my uh, uh, oh sweet girl, oh little girl. And it's it's disturbing at a point because she's his wife, and it, it and that the whole the the play covers this whole thing how um, men tend to assert their power and um, sort of it's it's a form of belittling their intellectual along with the also bodily autonomy because they make them feel like ki ye intellectual challenges be nahi handle kar sakti or ye uh, physically becomes to, to handle anything at all. Sure. Okay. So it, it's only saying here that when you use such titles, the other simply disappears. Right? So you, you're saying that uh, physical inferiority is emphasized. So while physical inferiority is emphasized, the other definitely disappears. Uh, and, and the power remains with the one who is calling her uh, little or whatever. Okay. Uh, it also says that uh, the other disappears and becomes invisible in many ways. Invisible in the sense that decision maker, decision making power will remain 
with the opposite uh so if the husband is calling her little my little girl what what was the title that he uses in the doll's house um miss i don't remember the exact uh, uh title but he keeps on ca calling her oh sweet child oh, oh sweet, sweet child oh, yes yeah, something so, like so, that so this sweet oh sweet child is a title right uh he is creating this title for the, for the wife and as you said that uh, it makes her uh, not only intellectually inferior but also physically uh, intellectually and physically which means that uh, if woman tries to leave that image of physical appearance uh, that will also be threatening uh, for the for the powerful so so miss like i have a, i'm sorry apne uh, agar complete karna tha i can say you 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 can say what you wanted to say uh, miss my question in regards to this was so is it like uh, when white women or as mammies when they because it's primarily white women who are uh, in charge of uh, engaging with black women when their their employees so do white women somehow take up that narrative that was given to them by a white man because it feels like uh, unko kisi ek white mard ne is tarah se bulaya and then wo further jin jinko apne uh, se inferior samajhte hain wo aage usi narrative ko pahuncha rahe hain uh, well, uh, this article is actually pointing to the continuation of uh, uh, you know continuation of a different kind of slavery which means that uh, slavery has ended but ideological difference continues and as i mentioned earlier that america uh, became independent in 1764 but until the end of the 19th century uh, this problem was you know like uh, there was a problem between white and black uh, strong problem because white probably still wanted them to serve white communities so you would see that in birth of a nation you are talking about uh, this uh, difference in the towards the end of the 19th uh, century and birth of a nation is produced about uh, 15 or 20 years later so it's showing that finally uh, black and white become equal and uh, that actually shows um, interracial marriage between black and white so resistance between people living in boston and people living in uh, new york was highlighted like uh boston probably showed stronger resistance to uh, uh black people becoming their equals and uh, as i said this problem was still there in 1960s which means another 60 years had passed since that problem between boston and new york which is highlighted in birth of a nation and in some forms it still continues so uh, this theory that uh, white women get this sense of superiority from white male uh, it is part of this uh, article as well and uh, it just keeps on discussing that uh, it has not disappeared even today uh, because uh, she she's writing this article in 2000 which is about another century after uh, this uh, movement you know to which which took place at the end of 19th century and which is um, which appears between ku ku klux klan and uh, people who wanted justice for black and white which means both white and black wanted justice for white and ku klux ku klux klan was one Uh, that that was continuously opposing it uh, towards the end of the 19th century okay so we are talking about you know like uh, this this difference still exists uh, even after 100 another 120 years
it was there in 1960s and uh, patricia hill collins is actually taking up in this article that it is still there and expresses it in in the form of these stereotypes which are created for black women and uh, apart from scholars uh, people would hardly discuss these things you know because she is pointing to controlling images and uh, people who are reading these articles or people who are creating this discussion would be perhaps in less numbers though america being a society is um, you know when you when such articles or piece of uh, writings do appear it they are forms of resistance or you can say that uh, uh, as i mentioned earlier that these images tend to change after this kind of reaction so if there was a mommy uh, you know so you would probably see the changes in mommies in media over a period of time and there would be changes in representation of matriarchs in media over a period of time so if people keep on reacting to like uh, somebody says that i should not be called o oh, sweet child or i should not be called sister and somebody says that i have a name please call me by my name right so media would actually leave these images and pick up uh, modified images so uh, we can we can still say that there would be a change in a controlling image right uh, i had specifically mentioned this uh, in regards to uh, femme fatale that was the image of a working woman and uh, that was the image of uh, white working woman in many cases at least in 1940s and i said that this this had a close connection to uh, world war and uh, this article also mentions world war uh, because um, it, it it was an important time in history because men were at war and women were in charge of their homes uh they were in charge of not only their homes they were responsible for supporting their children uh and providing them food or earning money to support their house so you can't say that money was only coming from the from men who were at war because i have already said that in 1920s uh, working women appeared in large numbers this article does say that uh Uh, white women uh, white women's number in um, by number of working white women had tremendously increased so working white women uh, in in a home like in a in a home where a mommy served a, a white woman was in charge of that mommy so you can perhaps still say that being in charge of mommy she had internalized Uh, whatever white community wanted or white husband wanted and she was uh, uh, because she had inter internalized the difference she wanted black woman to uh, behave in a particular way and be warm with the children with white children um, is it clear because i think i i connected it to a few different things uh, not just what is being discussed here but it's it was more historical ji mis context samajh aa raha hai iska context samajh aa gaya okay uh, so it says that uh, uh, oppositional binaries are inherently unstable you know it says uh, they represent unequal uh, you know uh, binaries uh, represent unequal power relations and they are unstable tensions may be temporarily relieved by subordinating one half of the binary to the other which means women should be subordinate to men and black people should be subordinate to white people so binary thinking or oppositional difference or objectification helps in uh, determining social hierarchy and uh, domination is based on difference and it is it is an 
essential part of asserting the difference uh essential for underpinning an entire system of thought where one is inferior and the other is superior okay so in this part it is saying that uh these differences actually help in asserting a system of thought and that system as i said i think one of my lectures earlier that uh, both derrida and uh, other people actually say that uh, this is epistemological and it helps in determining inferiority and superiority and uh, political economies of race gender and class oppression okay uh so amna would you try explaining this uh, new paragraph which is in front of you right now about african american women occupy a position of inferiority uh, can you try explaining this paragraph as i said that we'll try discussing um, everybody should try discussing one paragraph after the other uh i'm like well okay um all right it says that uh, african american women occupy a position whereby the inferior half of a series of these binaries converge so uh, by a series of binaries it just means that she is inferior being a woman because you are talking about binary of man and woman she is inferior being a woman of color so white as opposed to black uh, to black also emphasizes her inferiority so so it just says that a number of binaries converge to emphasize on inferiority of white uh, inferiority of black woman as opposed to white woman and it says that uh, that series also includes that they are uh, you know like emotional as opposed to uh, logical okay so these things she says that emotional passionate nature of black women has long been used uh, for sexual exploitation of black women right so by talking about her emotional and passionate behavior you are just saying that black women are like this and it helps in sexual exploitation okay uh so these these this, this kind of uh, images were used for judgment and it just emphasizes on uh on an opinion that the binary other has of them so it just not uh, give them a full human position and Uh, because then you are talking about they are lesser humans uh, by just referring to all these uh, sets of uh, binary oppositions that are converging at a certain point ma'am ji uh i feel like a lot of um, stereotyping and objectification has been done uh, for example uh, if they're talking about the the emotional nature of a black woman ke wo kis tarah se if they're being very emotional that that's that's the reason they're being exploited um if they woke about their uh, rights so then they're uh, slut shamed for it so i think in any case uh, because of her skin color she will have Uh, to go through all these objectifications and all these stereotyping and make her feel that she's inferior no matter how much work or effort she's putting uh in herself or making sure that she's being heard uska koi fayda nahi hota because at the end of the day 
उसका कलर स्किन कलर जो है दैट विल बी द थिंग जो उसको रोकेगा बिकॉज हाउ द सोसाइटी हैज मेड दिन कलर किस चीज से रोकेगा Uh, आपने कहा ना कि स्किन कलर रोकेगा सो आई एम जस्ट ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड कि स्किन कलर किस चीज से रोकेगा नो no, मैम अगर तो वो मतलब कि इवन वो ही बात में कह रही हूँ कि इवन इफ शी ट्राइंग टू मेक चेंजेस एंड सी हु शी रियली इज आई थिंक वो ही बात आ जाती है कि इतना वो है ऑपरेशन है उसके स्किन कलर को लेके दट इवेंचुअली वो वो ही बात आ जाती है कि इतनी असम्शन होंगी इतने स्टीरो टाइपिंग होगी उसके रेस को लेके और उसकी वजह से लॉट ऑफ ऑपरेशन विल टेक प्लेस do you think that this would also apply to asian woman or pakistani woman that uh, she would be considered emotional if not passionate at least warm uh, yes ma'am definitely yes ma'am so would it uh, would it be used to justify uh, women's oppression in pakistan you know it's talking about sexual exploitation in particular right so it says that emotional and passionate nature would be would become source of sexual exploitation so do you think that it applies to pakistan in any manner women are considered emotional in pakistan they are considered less logical yes right? ma'am especially in work places and even in decision making in general aap family mein agar koi decision making karni hai to मैन वो टेक द लीड और वो एक इन जनरल क्लेम होता है कि औरतें काफी इमोशनल हो जाती हैं और वो लॉजिकली हर एस्पेक्ट को नहीं देखती वो अच्छा डिसीजन नहीं बना पाती तो या आई फील लाइक एवरी वुमेन पर्सनली हैज लेकिन मिस आई आई थिंक कि मिस हाउ वुड यू एक्सप्लेन सेक्सुअल एक्सप्लॉयटेशन एट द हैंड्स ऑफ मतलब calling women emotional and passionate i mean i think uh, uh, it means that she can be easily manipulated because uh, of her emotions ke uh, she is too vulnerable so i think is wajah se बट वही बात है ना कि अगर इफ शी स्टैंडिंग अप फॉर हर सेल्फ तो आप तब भी उसको वो कहोगे कि uh she's crazy yeah uh you slut shame them so i think wo kisi bhi usme jo hai a woman will have to uh face these things yes uh, it it does imply that uh, it would be possible to exploit women because they are uh, sexually exploit women because they are emotional so if you keep on emphasizing on their femininity or on emotional behavior so it can be used for sexual exploitation because uh, the one who would be exploiting it you know uh, would also be emphasizing on these uh, characteristics of women you know you are emotional this is what i like about you for example calling sweet child i love you you know those kind of things so she is just saying that uh, these are allegedly used for sexual exploitation because you are emphasizing on certain characteristics and uh, by emphasizing on women's emotional behavior uh, you can you can actually you are actually emphasizing her inferiority right so which is uh, which is felt in this case uh, though it's not uh, mentioned uh directly you know so indirectly i i feel like i'm sorry to cut you but i feel like um being emotional for a woman who's gone through such like years and years of oppression would be the right thing to feel i mean not the only thing to feel but 
at least somewhat you've got to be in an emotional place to get out that rage i mean um, the amount of times i have fought with men in bnu or kisi cheez ke bare mein laro to agar aap koi jawab bhi do na unse unko to the first thing they say is okay you know what you're just being too emotional yeah don't don't be a girl or don't don't take it to heart because that is the first thing they would say to us because they think being emotional is a sign of inferiority but it's not i mean i think that it it if you are emotional about something that means that you are passionate about it and you want to take your rage out on it and i think um, it's very um ek kafi misinformed opinion hota hai ke because a person is emotional they can't make a logical decision uh, when like while we see men making is not like rash decisions all the time because they are uh, discriminating against women they have they unka bhi to emotion hai na anger towards women to work place mein itni dafa hota hai ki they discriminate theek hai mardon ko zyada opportunities mil jati hain auraton ko nahi milti so that also comes from wo jo unka hatred or wo bias jo hota hai which is illogical again so i don't see how women's emotions are you know put opposite to would you terms logic or um, kya kehte hain fair basically or because hame sikhaya hi jata hai because ye itni um itni toxic ek to masculinity hai ki jiski wajah se hame bhi ye lagta hai ki if we're being emotional ya for some reason theek hai to wo ek bahut hi buri cheez consider ki jati hai because mardon ko bhi ye sikhaya jata hai और तो इसीलिए जो मेन है वो उनको भी ये लगेगा बिकॉज उनके लिए सींग समन बींग इमोशनल और मेकिंग डिसीजन दैट वे उनके लिए भी इट्स इट्स अ वेरी न्यू थिंग और इट्स अ वेरी वो अनकंफर्टेबल पोजिशन टू बी इन सो सींग हर लाइक दिस उनको इट मेक्स दम डेफिनेटली अनकंफर्टेबल उसी वजह से दे वुड वॉन्ट them to not be that way as well because unko jab roka gaya hai to why would they want a woman to experience that thing so i guess sure all right so i i think uh, these are strong uh, you know like effective arguments in many ways uh, all she was saying here is that uh, these this is used for women's sexual exploitation because i think in one of the earlier readings uh, perhaps not in this class in the other class uh, we were talking about you know like emotional intelligence how uh, media can help in uh, developing emotional intelligence uh, and we looked at for example a small video clip uh, that was teaching children how to deal with for instance death right so uh, it was you know like uh, something that um, uh, because death is a strong uh, event in itself and uh, it can cause a lot of emotional damage so it only mentioned you know like uh, how to handle death by showing death of a um, of a pet dog and uh, then uh, the father actually engaged kid in making uh, you know like in getting a coffin for the dog and uh, at that place the kid actually saw another kid carrying a dog and uh, the other kid actually asked him oh you you don't have a dog anymore your dog died uh, so uh, emotional uh, intelligence actually focused on how to handle difficult situations but right now here it's just saying that uh, women's inability to make sound judgment in many cases uh, is uh, used for women's uh, sexual exploitation in many cases so there would be definitely individual cases uh, r- right here we are not uh, talking about individual cases this paragraph is actually emphasizing on the collective uh collective opinion collective uh, image uh, and in terms of collective image it says that uh, women's um, emotional and passionate nature is used for sexual exploitation of women uh 
okay so that that's where it just says that uh, it's not essentially fact but at this point we are talking about fact and opinion binary so this may be just an opinion and uh, it may not be a fact that women are always uh, incapable of making uh, sound judgment uh, and uh, men can also be very emotional in certain cases and emotion can be used for reaching certain goals in certain situations so there may be situations where emotion becomes very important part of winning something or achieving something right so this paragraph because the article focuses on uh, controlling images of black women Uh, so this paragraph is only focusing on uh, emotional passionate nature of black women and uh, in a manner that it uh, points to their sexual uh, exploitation uh, in in regards to their inability to make sound judgments so that means that uh, women uh, are not considered full human subjects if if they are they cannot make sound judgment and if they are emotional they can't be full as a as a subject they would remain an object and uh, that objectivity would help in asserting in equal power relations or it will help in assert, asserting oppositional difference uh, between the subject and the object okay uh i think what all of you have said is uh, you know it's uh, it's very logical and it's a uh, very good criticism on what we just read um so after amna um, uh ariba would you try discussing the next paragraph uh this paragraph how it helps in fostering injustice and stimulating uh resistance simultaneously uh you know because if we are talking about uh, the permanence that these uh, that these stereotypes actually show or these uh, controlling images show some kind of permanence so when uh, somebody like patricia hill collins actually discusses this she is talking about how these images are fostering injustice but at the same time she is also discussing how it's stimulating resistance and this only implies that uh, black women actually recognized that these images are helping uh, in determining their status in the social hierarchy and uh, structural injustice and when we talk about structures we are basically talk talking about uh, not only system of thought and knowledge but rather uh, symbolic that we discussed in the article by Laura Mulvey and she was talking about castration anxiety uh, the castra castration anxiety that uh, helps male assert uh his masculinity uh in a relationship with a female uh you know so that castration anxiety you can say that Ma laura melway was actually uh, stimulating resistance by discussing castration anxiety or system of injustice between man and woman uh, right here she is uh, patricia hill collins is actually talking about that uh, these images uh, uh, help in asserting injustice but because uh, a few centuries have passed since uh, american independence for example and since the end of colonization in many parts of the world and since the end of slavery uh, she is just talking about uh, how uh, black women have resisted to these images uh, and in this article she is also talking about you know like surveys of uh, black women uh, surveys for learning if these images are still uh, internalized or deference is still practiced 
so in the, in this from this point onwards she is just talking about you know like how black these images have been uh, viewed and what black women have actually learned over a period of time through these images uh, about themselves and how they have resisted to creation of these images and how different scholars have studied uh, their resistance or change in um, in these images over a period of time okay so it says that uh, black women emerged from slavery firmly uh, enshrined in the consciousness of white america as mommy and bad black woman so mommy was actually a bad black woman uh, as i said earlier she is bad uh because she is not a good mother for her own children right she is serving a white family uh and when slavery ended this image of mommy did not end so dominant ideology of the slave slave era fostered the creation of several interrelated socially constructed controlling images and mommy is an important controlling image right uh, she says that it it slavery it shows in many ways the continuation of slavery these uh, control black womanhood and mask social relations uh, you know like uh, disparity in social relations or disparity in terms of power relations between uh two races or between two types of women that are black and white okay so she says that uh, four virtues are emphasized when we speak of women and these four virtues are piety purity submissiveness and domesticity now she is mentioning these things in regards to uh, true white women uh conceived by white america right so white america is talking about piety purity and submissiveness and domesticity do these words find uh, appear very familiar hello uh, yes miss yes they do okay so right now we are talking about perception of a white woman so do they also coincide with with, with what we know of white women uh miss i miss, think ye, ye jo basically jo jis tarah keh rahi hai piety purity wagaira ye obviously उनकी जो टर्म जिसमें यूज ब्लैक वुमेन के यूज की जाती हैं कि एंग्री इमोशनल वायलेंट तो ये काफी बायस्ड ओपिनियंस होते हैं आई थिंक ये इमोशंस ये जिस तरह की ये सारी कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स होती हैं दे एग्जिस्ट इन जनरल इन ऑल ह्यूमन बीइंग्स इन डिफरेंट प्रोपोर्शन तो यूजिंग इस तरह के बायस टर्म्स फॉर वन ग्रुप ऑफ पीपल दैट्स जस्ट अनफेयर आई थिंक एंड दैट इज कम्प्लीटली describe how they are in actuality all right uh, so you are saying they they are not actual in actuality in the white society they do not exist as actually in the white society okay nahi nee, that's not what i'm saying i'm saying ki chalo ye jo sange words hain ke um matlab um just like for example uh hum abhi mardon aur agar auraton ko just so wo it's just so they are uh, described in you know in history ke women are emotional and men are logical that's wrong right to kyunki ye kafi biased terms hai in actually me in reality every human being can be emotional and every and at the same time they can be logical as well to agar agar kya kehte hai agar ब्लैक वेमेन एंड वाइट वेमेन को हम अगर वो हिस्ट्री में अगर 
एक्सप्लेन कर रहे हैं कि ब्लैक वेमेन आर मोर वायलेंट एंड वेमेन ऑन दर हैंड आर प्योर एंड वाइट वेमेन ऑन दर हैंड आर प्योर एंड दे आर यू नो कामर तो दैट्स जस्ट अ बायस्ड ओपिनियन encouraging the passivity and acquiescences of a perfect woman and idolizing that at the same time simultaneously i mean this is how i would view these cardinal virtues linked with women they're huh. creating they're creating like how would i say they're creating this idol image of what a perfect woman is and they reinforce it through the other categories if that message came across i agree um, Yes, so right now i think uh, they're not exactly a reality as of now but in the past they definitely were and true womanhood as is written in that article was based on that and that thing uh, persists in um, now it persists in communities which um, were colonized and it's it's very prevalent in those communities to wo aapko wo ek colonial element of thinking mein dikhta hai ke you know because these were directly linked with orthodox um the church at that time and wohi uh, values of wo phir jo colonies thi unke andar bhi infiltrate hue the wohi binaries regarding gender bhi phir aayi thi so this this is just what i could gather उटनहुड so it's uh, by calling it cult of true womanhood it seems that these uh, four different characteristics are actually uh, virtues uh, that are created by by that cult that women should be uh, it also says traditional family ideal so this means that uh, whether hollywood or bollywood or lollywood because right now she is discussing white america and uh, or white world uh, we can say that the cult of women would actually emphasizes on traditional family ideals and traditional family ideals or this kind of virtues are extremely important uh, for the family or for continuity of the family you know because and also they, these qualities they facilitate men and their matlab goals एज एन फॉर एग्जाम्पल जो प्योरिटी वाला कॉन्सेप्ट है चले दिस अगर हम वो कैपिटलिज्म वाला पॉइंट लेकर आए कि इट फेसिलिटेट्स देयर नीड टू यू नो देयर नीड फॉर प्रॉपर्टी पर्सनल इनहेरिटेंस प्रॉपर्टी इनहेरिटेंस टू मेक श्योर के जो उनकी सारी फैमिली प्रॉपर्टी है वो उनके उनके ट्रू एयर को जा रही है ठीक है टू इंश्योर के देयर वेमेन आर नॉट इन्वॉल्व इन सेक्शुअल रिलेशनशिप विद अदर other men aur phir jo submissiveness hai wo bhi ke men will be making the decisions theek hai wo jo sare important decisions hain sare men lenge domesticity bhi ke domesticity 
क्या कि वो भी मैन को फैसिलिटेट करती है कि औरतें घर पे रहेंगी वो घर का सारा काम करेंगी वो बच्चों को संभालेंगी तो मैन वुड बी एबल टू फोकस ऑन देयर जॉब्स सो ऑल दीज क्या कहते हैं ये जो सारी वेट्यूज वगैरह मतलब वी डोंट वेमेन हैव नेवर डिफाइंड के व्हाट काइंड ऑफ मैन इज द आइडियल वन इवन इफ वी हैव अ सर्टेन आइडिया इन माइंड वी डोंट डिक्टेट वेमेन how they need to be to be you know i the we don't dictate men give for them to be ideal how they need to act to ye jo sari jo virtues hain ye sare men ko in the end facilitate karte hain and they're not matlab matlab auton ke individuality ko wo contribute nahi karte wo right i i sort of agree with no in that sense ke uh they're entirely you know like entirely doing and as a set of qualities rather than as people or disregarding what they have and i i think i'd like to add to what noor said ke in in essence these qualities were simply um there to make sure the 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 power structure at that time would be held intact which is that the economic and uh, other forms of social um dynamics that allow men to function as patriarchs ke wo rahe matlab uh i agree with nimra but i also think that it shows the insecurity of a man he he has with a woman because i i am trying to tame a woman by labeling at uh, as a virtues i think that shows ki kitne jo hai insecurity hai uh ek women ko leke because she might uh be so much better than him in so many ways so i think ye bhi ho sakta hai he noor you wanted to say something please add नहीं मैं वो मेरा पहले का आई हैव रेज माय हैंड वो पहले का जब मैंने पहले पॉइंट बोला था अब मैंने नीचे कर दिया वो गलती से ऊपर हुआ ओके सो डू यू थिंक दैट एनी ऑफ दीस फोर वर्चुअल्स आर एक्चुअली मेन आल्सो हैव दीस फॉर फोर वर्चुअल्स और एनी ऑफ दीस फोर वर्चुअल्स अम मिस ऑफ कोर्स सॉरी नमरा सॉरी नो बोलो आप जिस तरह हिस्ट्री में औरतों को टेम किया गया दीज क्वालिटीज डू अपियर इन दैम इवेंचुअली जैसे अगर हम पाकिस्तान की एग्जाम्पल ले लें ये काफी ज्यादा प्रेवलेंट है कि औरतें काफी सबमिसिव यूजली होती हैं घर में क्योंकि वो ये है ना कि उनको इतना वो सिखा दिया गया है तो वो चुप कर जाती हैं मर्दों के सामने वो इतना बोलती नहीं है और डोमेस्टिसिटी भी जो होती है वो औरतों को यहाँ पे सिखाई जाती है कि घर में किस तरह अच्छे तरीके से परफॉर्म करना है खाना किस तरह बनाना है आपने इमोशनल लेबर किस तरह प्रोवाइड करनी है अपने घर वाले फैमिली मेंबर्स को अपने हस्बैंड जो है उनके जो घर वाले हैं उनकी जो फैमिली एक्सटेंडेड फैमिली है उनको किस तरह आपने इमोशनल लेबर परफॉर्म करनी है और जो प्योरिटी भी उनको सारों को बताई जाती है कि यू डोंट हैव टू इन्वॉल्व इन सेक्सुअल रिलेशनशिप्स इन एनी काइंड ऑफ रिलेशनशिप विद एनी मैन अदर देन योर हस्बैंड योर फ्यूचर हस्बैंड तो दीज और पार्टी भी के बोलना नहीं है एलिगेंस होनी चाहिए ग्रेस होनी चाहिए आपके लहजे में आपके उठने बैठने में तो दीज क्वालिटीज डू इवेंचुअली अपेयर लेकिन दैट्स ऑल्सो बिकॉज देर बींग टॉट दिस वे लाइक इन क्वालिटीज के अलावा देर they are not allowed to have any kind of individuality of their own but that's the thing that they are taught this way men are on the other hand they are taught ke acha aap ne you have to be you know the breadwinner of the family to is tarah is tarah so i think if humans are taught any quality bachpan se hi and wo itni shuru se history mein chalta aa raha hai and it eventually ends up in their the genetically be as well so of course phir it does appear humans can be taught anything If, if they condition that way. So you think that yeah. these four are genetic conditions? No, no, that's not what I meant. Feel like they're being taught this way, like, but always, from history, from women, they're being taught this way, like, but always, from history, from women, they're being taught this way, like, but always, from history, from women, they're being taught this way, like, but always, from history, from women, they're being taught this way, like, but always, from history, from women, they're being taught this way, like, but always, from history, from women, they're being taught this way, like, but always, from history, from women, they're being taught this way, like, but always, from history, from women, they're being taught this way, like, but always, from history
um miss i think that the piety and purity thing is something that did exist in men because um it was it was like a stand wo alag baat hai ki they had different standards of what piety and purity is for themselves and for what it is for women and i think that still exists even now um like our piety and purity is more or or generally of women is more linked to um clothes and uh whether they're coming off as uh, having any form of um uh, agency or not or uh, you know these things whereas mardon ki piety and purity would uh, take a more uh, it would take a religious turn however it would more be uh, it, it would be related to more worldly values of uh, of humility and nobility and things like that as well for us it's it's more towards religion rather than um, separate values as well so so you were saying that in a certain cross section uh, you know if a survey was to be conducted you would find only these two uh, in certain men not in all of them but the, the the other two would definitely disappear because we do not encourage men to be submissive and uh, domesticity is also not possible in many cases when we are talking of men so purity and piety is something that you feel uh, would be reflected in terms of mm. religious behavior good very nice okay all right so it all it says that eventually all these uh, four virtues actually end up in creating a justification for economic exploitation of uh, the other or in this case economic exploitation of the house slave and uh, it would explain be used to a uh, restriction of uh, black women to domestic services for a very long time so at this point onwards it's only discussing uh, that after world war 2 when uh, women uh, more and more women were working uh, outside homes so it says that uh, when uh, work outside open for white women it gradually also open for black women you know so it means that uh, the monopoly as uh, you know as to their restriction to homes was broken after a very long time because women were restricted to domestic services for a very long time so mommy image is uh, actually um, it's it it's a, it represents a normative yardstick uh, that is that was used to evaluate black women's behavior inside the house it says mommy was considered loving nurturing and caring for white children and white family better than her own so as she is uh, taking care of white children and white family better than her own eventually she becomes a bad mother for her own children okay so this 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 image of white mother or mommy uh, uh, sorry this image of mommy as uh, as a nanny to the white mother it it actually emphasizes it symbolizes the dominant group perception of the ideal black female and uh, this is the ideal black female that can have a relationship with the white male power or elite white male power so mommy actually emphasizes on uh, the relationship between white uh, families and black female uh, as as a domestic worker okay so mommy knows her place uh, as obedient servant and she accepts her subordination which means the deference continues uh in this part she is just saying that uh, as black uh, women were continuously criticizing these images of mommies very very strongly so she says that uh, uh 
she mentions true dear harris uh, she mentioned her uh, put um, true dear's uh, quotation in the earlier part of the essay so she says that uh, if there is a dif different uh, image for example she mentions from mommies to militants which means that another image of uh, another negative image would appear if uh, you know because um, from mommies to militants she is just saying that uh, domesticity is challenged okay uh, in this part she is only talking about a number of surveys of black women just to study if black women had internalized deference if they were as warm and nurturing as uh, white and black social relations demanded from black women to be and she is trying to study if mummification uh, is uh, is still there mummification is there but is behavior or attitude of internalizing mummification is also there uh she is mentioning this little incidents at one of the supermarkets she says audrey lord uh, she, uh was walking through a shopping center and in in her uh, you know she had a white baby in in her stroller and uh, there was a black woman crossing uh, a white woman with a baby in another stroller and the baby in the white woman stroller screamed oh look mommy a baby made right so uh, this this concept of mummification was so much internalized that a white uh, the white toddler or a white baby girl sitting in a white stroller in a white woman stroller actually screamed oh mommy look at uh, mommy a baby made oh look mommy a baby made so you can see that uh, this this uh, this relationship was uh, so uh, deep in in the white and black americas relations that even an infant or a toddler uh, grew up learning the difference uh, between the uh, the difference between uh, between their positions as inferior and superior and uh, even little children could scream uh, to express Uh, this kind of power relations so this these are learned at quite an early stage she says that mommy image is central to intersecting oppression of race gender sex and class sexuality and class uh, because racial oppression uh, images in in terms of racial oppression uh, images like mommy influence black maternal behavior okay so black uh, women are not uh, allowed to be anything other than uh, warm to children of white families and uh, and it it also reflects on their maternal behavior for their own children so this actually has a double edge meaning uh, one meaning of mommy is uh, being warm for children of white families Uh, they they are forced to exhibit exhibit their mommy fight jobs it says um, uh, to and they are also encouraged to transmit their own children uh, the deference behavior that many are forced to ex exhibit so even if these mommies uh, do not believe in deference but they are forced to exhibit deference they are forced to exhibit that they have internalized their status as mommies and they are encouraged to transmit these qualities to their own children so they should be teaching black children their assigned place in white power structures uh, any comment on uh, transmitting or encouraging deference to the next generation okay so all she is saying that black women who internalize the mommy image potentially become effective conduit for perpetual racial oppression which means this will continue uh, as such 
So these ideas about mummies buttress uh, racial hierarchies, and uh, it also implies that when you give black women better jobs, uh, the white employer actually would encourage uh, or uh, encourage middle class white women in particular to identify more closely with them. Okay. Gee. All right. So it means that uh, the black women can be employed uh, against lesser wages. And uh, she's just saying that it also helps in identifying their relationships with their uh, with the husbands, fathers, and sons. So it means that uh, internalization is a bit more tricky and a bit more complex because uh, superiority of the employer should continue in, uh, in this form. And racial class, uh, racial and class privilege uh, shall also continue. Uh, then it says that uh, those black who have actually uh, who actually rise in the middle class, uh, they they can enjoy uh, their rise, but uh, underclass is still uh, you know like most people are still uh, considered to have. Uh, this kind of behavior or this kind of activity, and in the, and this continues in the in the normal social life. So, differential behavior should be exhibited, and uh, mommy is the public face that white expect black women to assume for them. Uh, mommy image serves as a symbolic. Uh, for example, image of castrated woman serves as the symbolic. Uh, so mommy is another uh, image that serves the symbolic function of maintaining oppression of gender and sexuality. Okay, so symbolism actually then again goes back to male and female relations because uh, earlier we did this we did discuss that uh, castration anxiety helps in, ex in exercising the power of um, uh, male. And here it is saying that the symbolic functions in maintaining oppression of a black woman, or mommy is the image that white America has of black woman in its mind. So right now she's saying that juxtapose this image of uh, black woman against the image of white woman. Juxtaposition only means that you put two images together. Okay, so mommy image as the other symbolizes the oppositional difference. Uh, oppositional bit difference and uh, as such, uh, it is. It has significant importance for emphasizing the power of the other. After that, she does mention that if uh, black women start emphasizing on their uh, physical power and how that physical power is seen, that is particularly seen in the image of the matriarch. Right, so mommy actually does not have uh, this power. Mommy is uh, asexual uh, woman, asexual black woman. She's a surrogate mother, and uh, white family expects mommy to completely commit to her job, right? which means serve the white family and white children. So th this committance is part of, uh, part of the mommy figure. 
okay so when uh, black women are ex are accepted in other jobs than mommy uh, because after world war 2 uh, there were more and more women working uh, outside homes so domestication had kind of ended so these women were actually hired for lesser pay uh, lesser pay not only as opposed to men but also as opposed to white women right so these women actually became source of uh, cheap labor and it says that uh, these controlling images were actually uh, used as a guise for masking the economic exploitation uh, in class okay uh, apart from this uh, she is uh, particularly emphasizing on uh, uh, matriarchs and she does say that uh, the matriarch is uh, is basically a working woman uh, matriarch is supporting the, her black family his uh, she is working in many cases in place of her husband right so matriarch is somebody uh because uh, she is physically powerful and in many cases she is uh, uh, she shows uh, her power in speech and she is more assertive as well so you can say that matriarch uh, by expressing these uh, characteristics becomes inferior she she lacks femininity and uh, and because of femininity uh, she because of a lack of femininity and because of display of her economic uh, superiority over black male matriarch becomes again a negative symbol and uh, white uh, white uh, call black culture inferior because of these matriarchs so matriarchs are somebody uh, who lack femininity and they, they are assertive in not only in their physical uh, sense but also in terms of their body language and behavior and by supporting uh, their relationship uh, by supporting their families they become inferior so it says that matriarchal families are an outcome of racial oppression and poverty right so she just say that uh, political dis uh, dis and and franchisement and economic exploitation of african american was uh, entrenched uh, to control over black women and uh, matriarch is another stereotype uh, which which is uh, very powerful in 1960s so black communities uh, you know like uh, uh, ideology uh, matriarchs actually uh, emphasize on uh, ideology that uh, white ones have for them right black matriarchs uh, uh, when you uh, in in these surveys of black matriarchs they do find that not all women were teaching uh, their children to uh, practice deference or they were not even you know there were many black women were not even passing on deference to their children okay so these women are aggressive and feminine black women uh, they they are uh, they show emasculation uh, to their lovers and to their husbands and uh, these men uh, understandably either are uh, you know like they they desert uh, they, they have deserted their partners which means that uh, the uh, you know like hollywood have been has been emphasizing on the family quite often but in this case you are looking at deserted partners so even black men are refusing to marry the matriarchs so if their own men 
or men of the same color refuse to marry a matriarch it makes their culture inferior and uh, in in the surveys it just says that it was found that black men express their desire to marry white women because they thought uh, black women were less feminine they were overly aggressive and they were not good for even black men as lovers or husbands okay so it it's just saying that when your own men are rejecting you because you are not submissive so you are inferior as a culture so it means that uh, the image of uh, submissive hard working servant is not there when you are looking at the image of a matriarch she is a working woman she is supporting her family uh, she is not a submissive hard working servant like mommy right so it means that uh, she, she is she is not so feminine uh, she is aggressive and assertive and even black man is rejecting her uh, or black man is rejecting her as a wife so the culture is primarily inferior uh here she is giving examples of uh, a few different uh, television shows uh that that had this kind of uh, woman in them for example she says uh, in a raising in the sun the first play ever on broadway uh, it says that uh, in this first ever sh uh, play and this play was also written by a black woman uh lauren hansbury uh it shows a widow lena younger who tries to actualize the dream of purchasing a house for her, for her family so if this matriarch was supporting her family she had the desire to get a house for the family as well uh she is uh, patricia hill collins is talking about actualization of the dream of a woman dream of a white of a black woman okay so if you are familiar i i believe many of you would be familiar with the hierarchy of needs uh, which means uh, hierarchy of needs of a person we often talk about that that first of all we have physical needs for example we should have food we should have oxygen right so first of all we would be fulfill our physical needs next we have needs for safety which means we should have have a home where we live safely on number 3 we should have uh, uh, you know like uh, uh, need for belonging to the family or to a lover and at number 4 need for developing self esteem and at number 5 need for self actualization right so uh, what maslow actually says that until the first need or prepotent need is fulfilled we cannot talk about the second need so self actualization is the highest of all needs one can have uh, after fulfilling physical needs or safety needs or Uh, needs for belonging or self esteem so actualization is the last one and here she is talking about actualization of lena younger to to have a house for her family so all she is saying that this was the first broadway play that actually showed story of a black woman written by a black woman whereby a black woman wanted to get a house for her family so she has reached the level of self actualization uh then she mentions another play uh, she says this uh, brown girl uh, brown stones uh, it's a novel uh, novelist paul marshall uh, wrote this novel in 1959 she says this novel presents boys a black mother negotiating a series of relationships with her husband with her daughters and other women in the community 
Uh, why? Because this was a working woman. She's a matriarch. And a lot of negativity is created about her her uh, character. So the woman actually tries to have a. She's shown negotiating a series of relationship with all these people uh, who are family members and who are also community members. Okay, so which means that uh, uh, then she mentions a 1974 production that is showing a lesbian black mother, right? So the problems for the lesbian black mother have furthered uh, because she's trying to balance her needs for self-actualization with the pressures of child rearing in a homophobic community or a community that is scared of uh, homosexuals. So at this point, she's just saying that picture is uh, a picture for a matriarch or working uh, black mother is getting more or more complicated because of the addition of other variables in her character, right? So negotiation would also be a, a, a little more complex at this stage. And uh, then she's mentioning, uh, I think she's gradually moving to the controlling image of uh, unwed mothers, right? Because in this paragraph right in front of you, uh, she's talking about surveys of black mothers uh, surveys of uh, black mothers whose daughters, whose unwed daughters were pregnant, right? So she's saying that uh, these, uh, uh, though, why, though black cultures are quite different, but they have been living together uh, with, uh, within white societies for a number of centuries now. And uh, she mentioned uh, the, the cult of, uh, you know, like a cult, family cult or cult of womanhood that she mentioned earlier. She is briefly mentioning, referring to the same here because she says in her study of uh, black teenage mothers, uh, Kaplan found that uh, mothers were showing different uh, kind of reactions to teenage pregnancies of their daughters. Some mothers felt, uh, despite living in America, they felt that their daughters, their teenage daughters had failed them because they, they did not have the four me virtues mentioned earlier, right? And some mothers uh, hoped that their daughters would do better in their lives in future. So some mothers were talking about, uh, uh, you know, that their daughters failed them through te teenage pregnancies. Other did not say that their daughters failed them. They just said that their daughters would do better in future. And uh, she says that mothers uh, with humble beginnings still showed that uh, uh, their daughters, uh, you know, those who from humble beginnings and who had worked hard to achieve a middle class status felt that their daughters had cheated them which means that working women though had progressed in their lives and they had become part of middle class in, uh, in, in the society where they were living, uh, they did feel that their daughters had cheated them. So it's, you can see that uh, here she's just talking about uh, hardships that uh, teenage or un, uh, hardships that, uh, that, they, that had come to their families because of a pregnant daughter, uh, despite America accepting or West accepting this kind of situation, uh, reactions were quite different. Okay, so which means that uh, she's just trying to explain that uh, uh, black, uh, black children uh, lack the attention and care uh, that uh, white middle class children had and by and the immoral behavior uh, is used to emphasize on a future uh, un, uh, uh, you know future imbalance in power relationships in terms of job or a better future because she's saying that if she did not practice good norms, you probably did, do not discuss, uh, deserve a better status in future or better achievement in your coming days. 
so deficiency is actually related to children's achievement in terms of uh, in terms of morals so economic or political in, um, inferiority becomes a part of their uh, moral behavior at a, at a different stage or at an at an earlier stage and it, she says that uh, uh, these um, these controlling images um, because they are showing deficiencies so so they are actually linked to their future achievement or unequal power relations or unequal economic relations okay so they are used to emphasize on on inferior housing underfunded schools employment and discrimination uh, and consumer racism is also seen any comment on what we just discussed uh it just says no, that okay it just says that these images of african american matriarchs allow white men and white women to black women for uh to make them responsible for their children's failure in school and in law and order situations because uh, they think that if matriarchs can't look after their children they will become part of gangs uh you know like street uh, they will show all kind of disturbance in society and uh, they will be responsible for future in poverty or law and order situations where children black children end up in jails so this is also kind of linked to the behavior of the matriarchs uh, bad mothers for their own children uh inability to model appropriate gender behavior they do not have appropriate gender behavior themselves they are unfeminine and too strong and uh, because they are assertive outside uh, they 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 lack uh, all these four virtues and uh, can't uh, look after their children well so they are basically uh, bad mothers Uh, she's just saying so this way they control they create a punishing industry right so this punishing industry uh, is a word that she is using for criminal justice system and uh, she just says that this punishing industry uh, locks up a uh, disproportionate number of us blacks uh, one if if they arrest one white man they arrest eight black men or eight black children so it means that uh, when you start blaming the matriarch for not uh, raising her children proper, uh, properly uh, the us criminal justice justice system puts more black children in jail and uh, she's saying this 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 system is out of control punishment industry that is uh, that is uh, punishing children of uh, 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 black matriarchs or black women okay so she's just uh, saying that uh, this becomes a never ending story uh, for black women all right so here she is just uh, talking about you know like uh, white patriarchal power is challenged or was challenged after world war 2 because white women had started working uh, in workplaces right so uh, because white women were challenging uh, male power at home uh, aggressive assertive uh, black, uh, women were penalized and they were abandoned by uh, men or uh, which which means that uh, poverty further increased okay and uh, these women were stigmatized for being unfeminine so this was even stronger uh, it was happening to white women and it was also happening to black women because and black men in particular were rejecting black women as their matri as their marital partners okay and black men said more often that these black women were undesirable 
or less desirable than white wives. So black men actually started marrying white women because of uh, uh, because matriarchs were uh, they were less interested in uh, matriarchs. Okay. Um, so uh, here it is saying that matriarchs were considered dangerous, deviant, castrating even as mothers, right? So if matriarch is dangerous and deviate and castrating uh, mother, castrating because by, by working she is dangerous for the male, and she is a castrating female because she is reversing the male roles. So she is saying that uh, this kind of impression of dangerous deviant, uh, deviant castrating mother actually divided black community, uh, you know, uh, even during the liberation struggle, right? So if the liberation struggle, you can say that it was there uh, not only in 19th century, but also was there because, uh, you know, as I mentioned in 1960s, uh, Jim Crow laws uh, barred uh, black people uh, from entering the white man's parks and in many other uh, places uh, in society, right? So it is just saying that uh, black community started reacting uh, black community was divided because they were, they said they are scared of dangerous deviant castrating mothers. They were scared of the matriarchs. So this was actually more, more complicated and more critical uh, in this period. Um, so uh, gender specific patterns of uh, gender specific patterns uh, were emphasized submissive dependent feminine women uh, were highlighted and uh, this this kind of reaction is just saying that submissive dependent women were more desirable in many cases uh, and uh, it says that african women who must work encounter pressures to be submissive like mommies in one setting and if uh, if uh, they are stigmatized as, as matriarchs in other settings and they are stigmatized as matriarchs in their own homes as well which is creating this um, reaction okay in the next part she's only talking about uh, as i said unwed mothers were on uh, social welfare or welfare benefits. So she's saying that uh, poor working class black women who make use of social welfare benefits, right? So these, um, as long as poor black women were denied social welfare benefits, there was, there was no need for the stereotype. But as at the minute, because the system has shaped up in a manner that you have to provide for unwed with mothers or women who need welfare benefits. The stereotype is not only created, it has become very powerful, you know. So which means that these unwed mothers or uh, social welfare uh, women or welfare women, uh, she should have access to state services so she is rec recognized as somebody who is a burden on the system so this controlling image is, is uh, created to actually control the behavior of uh, women who are uh, who are either from inner city or who need uh, support from the system so the stereotype is created in the action to express political power uh, of the superior. Uh, and it is also created because with time, with the passage of time, black women are demanding more and more political power and equity. 
and they are demanding access to state services uh, just uh, as the access to state services is provided to any white person they want equity in terms of that uh, so this this image uh, is created because of that in this paragraph she is mentioning the breeder woman right so this is more about uh, an image that was created during slavery because uh, just like hordes of animals goats and sheep or any other animal that would produce a lot of children and uh, production of children mean increasing the assets of the powerful or the superior or white elite right so if a slave was producing uh, a lot of children it means the number of slaves was increasing with the production of children so the women were breeder women right so uh, this was uh, very powerful uh, when they were slaves uh, and it says that uh, breeder woman image created during slavery this image provides an ideological justification of efforts to harness black women's fertility to the need of changing the politi political economy right i think somebody mentioned uh, that is uh, mentioned in the last class uh, that uh, poor people tend to have more children because uh, more more the number of children more would be earning home hands at home right so this is kind of uh, it's in a way it is similar so it is saying that uh, this this terminology was created during slavery but it it's it's still effective because it's it's uh, reflecting reflecting on black women's fertility to the needs of a changing political economy so an ideological justification for using the term even today uh it is suitable for having uh children uh more uh, it's it's uh, you know like uh, black women as more suitable for having children that white women because as uh, working white women emerged uh, we also learned that white women uh, started saying for example they should have less number of children even in pakistan for a very long time we were uh, uh, population planning groups were advertising uh, hum do hamare do like parents if we are two parents we would have only two children right so it's just saying that uh, as a white woman had emerged as working white woman had emerged the number of uh, children uh, white women were producing was reduced okay so it it also showed that uh, fertility of white woman had changed because she wanted lesser children and uh, when we talk about breeder woman and we try to compare the image of the breeder black woman we actually say these women produce more children right so it's reflecting on the changing pol political economy where white women have are you know have an increasing tendency of producing less children and black women are producing more children okay so this image provides an ideological justification for efforts to harness black women's fertility to the needs of a changing political economy during slavery the breeding woman image portrayed black women as more suitable for having children than white women okay because that increased the number of children or number of slaves by claiming that black women were able to produce children as easily as animals this image provided justification for interference in enslaved africans reproductive lives you know it only means that slaves were pushed and pushed to produce more children because uh, by producing more children uh, they increased the number of assets of the white of the white uh, master a slave owners wanted enslaved africans to breed because every slave child born Uh, represented a valuable unit of his property another unit of labor and a female the prospects for more slaves right so probably they preferred it's 
it probably implies that um, during the slavery, they preferred having a, a black female child because more if black uh, more if more bla black women were born, they will produce they will increase the number of slaves. The controlling image of the breeder woman served to justify slave owners' intrusion into black women's decision about fertility. So while they were slaves, they were not allowed to decide when and when not to have the child because the master desired they produce more and more children. Okay, uh, I think uh, uh, there, there is perhaps uh, one more stereotype that is uh, that comes after this part and that is the stereotype of uh, Jezebel or hooker or black prostitute. Okay, so uh, any comment on what we have discussed so far? No comments? Okay, so this part about the breeder woman, it's only saying that uh, it's, it's also has an effect in terms of social welfare because uh, as child production never ends, the burden on the social welfare system also continues. Okay, so in this part, she's just saying that uh, uh, how uh, different governments or Republican administrators uh, reacted to social welfare programs given to African Americans or uh, exploited uh, exploitative job scenarios and uh, subsistence uh, systems you know uh, over a period of time and uh, as i mentioned that uh, jezebel is about uh, uh, about the black prostitute it's the image of a black woman uh, or a hooker so we can see that uh, uh, if you even write here Jezebel, you would find images of uh, black women who are increasingly conceived as uh, hookers or uh, who are conceived as people who lacked uh, the four virtues uh, that were mentioned here because Jezebel would be as aggressive as a matriarch, right? Uh, she is um, she is a working woman, but at the same time she's a hooker. So, if you can try uh, looking at some of um, some of their images in this part. Uh, gee, any comments uh, on what we have discussed? So you could see that uh, they were talking about lawlessness of uh, the children of matriarchs. And right here, uh, it's only saying that a final controlling image, the Jezebel, whore or hooky is central in the nexus of controlling images of black womanhood because efforts to control black women's sexuality lie at the heart of black women's oppression. Historical Jezebels and contemporary hookies represent a deviant, deviant black female sexuality. Uh, the image of Jezebel originated under slavery and uh, women were portrayed to use, uh, you know, like uh, sexually uh, aggressive wet nurses. So during slavery, Jezebel were considered sexually aggressive wet nurses uh, breeders, uh, from breeders to Jezebel, you can see that uh, the, Im the image of uh, black woman's sexuality is, you know, like it's becoming more and more aggressive. So breeders were uh, considered to produce more and more children and Jezebel are considered sexually aggressive wet nurses. So Jezebel function was to 
uh, relegate all black women to the category of sexually aggressive women. So uh, it was, uh, though it was created for the cookies, uh, it was projected on all women. So it only means that e even if some women were functioning as Jezebel, all black women were considered sexually aggressive women, thus providing a powerful rationale for the widespread sexual assaults by white men on, white, on black women, right? So slave women uh, reported uh, a lot of sexual ex assaults by white men, uh, but this image of Jezebel uh, continues in the form of new image of Hoki. Okay, so it just says the black women could be portrayed, uh, black slave women could be portrayed as having excessive sexual appetite and increased fertility should be expected, should be the expected outcome. Okay, by supporting the nurturing uh, that African American women might give their own children uh, would strengthen black family networks and uh, by forcing black women to work in the field, wet nurse, white children and emotionally nurture their white owners, slave owners effectively tied the controlling images of Jezebel and Nami to the, ex to the ex economic exploitation inherent in the institution of slavery. So it is just connecting all, all the images that, uh, that she started discussing at the start and then she's saying that if Jezebel is, was sexually ex aggressive, it means that more children would be an expected outcome. And uh, this, this uh, image was uh, projected onto all other black women and all other black women were also considered sexually aggressive, uh, irrespective uh, of uh, their treatment as mommy. So Jezebel and mommy both were used um, from Jezebel to mommy, all images were used for economic exploitation of black women. And if she says that it is inherent within the institution of slavery or institutions that use, um, uh, that actually oppress or uh, express power relations or imbalance in that in this manner right so it just says that it is historical legacy uh, which goes on and uh, women are seen as black women are seen as sexually aggressive uh, which means uh, it becomes part of popular image or popular uh, culture overall you know like uh, Puki mama is another word that is used uh, because uh, of this uh, behavior of black women. This terminology is used for black women, Puki mama. Uh, he's just mentioning that uh, uh, here he's mentioning uh, two life crew song, Puki mama. So the terminology is so popular that uh, that media uh, uh, productions with the same title are produced. So it is just saying that two live crew uh, show, created this song, Hooky Mama. And uh, you would find a lot of uh, negative images in many songs overall. So she's just saying that misogyny is reflected in Hooky Mama. Uh, so singers were uh, quite clear and many musical bands are quite clear when they are showing misogyny in music uh, and, uh, and this basically goes on. Gee, any comment on what we discussed? Uh, we have, I think, discussed every, uh, we have discussed all that was mentioned here. Uh, all of the controlling images that are mentioned in this article.
and uh, all it is saying that uh, these images are effective in ghettoizing uh, a person we create these uh, ghettos of you know these creative uh, these uh, controlling images are actually the ghettos that are used uh, to juxtapose power power of male female sexuality or uh, just to emphasize imbalance in power relations ji jangir you are using two different uh, accounts to join all right uh so the, in this last one only it is saying that uh, deviant sexuality factor is emphasized uh i think deviant in terms of uh, virtues that have been emphasized earlier so uh, jezebel would be conceived as a freak and if she is a freak her sexual partners become uh, similarly stigmatized or as 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 an image she represents hyper masculinity the hyper masculinity of often attributed to black men right so black women black women or jezebel are considered freaks and black men as as partners are also considered hyper masculine Uh, because it says that jezebel's uh, sexual partners would be stigmatized along with uh, black women or blank black or jezebel uh so in the song uh, she has uh, pointed out to this lyric it's she says the song says freaky shit is what i like and i love to see two bitches dyke okay so uh, again aggressive and hypersexuality is emphasized and uh, not only emphasized uh, it's or it's considered a uh, part of black or black sexuality uh, i believe that many other authors um, even academic authors at various times have uh, discussed white sexuality as normal uh, black as excessive and asian in some cases uh, under sexed though uh, the article that we discussed in the last class did say that uh, yasmin jewani uh, was discussing you know like in this article on uh, oriental women uh, yasmin jewani did highlight that uh, many hollywood films show uh, asian women or oriental women from at least 22 countries uh, as uh, as 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 people asian people or asian women uh, they highlight their sexuality because they produce many children abundance of children right despite that i think you would find many articles by different authors that would say that asian asian are asians are under sexed and uh, black are over sexed and white are just normal so do patricia collins patricia hill collins is saying something which is very different uh it is just saying that uh, she is saying that uh, black women are seen as sexually aggressive and what i meant when i was looking at uh, you know this article by yasmin jewani she is saying that hollywood uh, hollywood shows uh, women from orient as uh, uh you know it highlights their uh, sexual behavior uh, abundance of children and poverty and those kind of things 
so i think that in in this sense we just see that if some if one of the authors says that asians are undersexed that does not um, uh, we see difference in terms of argument uh, we see uh, a debate that uh, that is showing two different sides to the same thing jivani is apparently talking about uh, oversexed asians as they are producing too many children but in this article it just says that uh, white women fertility is decreased in the post world war scenario uh so further she has connected this uh, behavior to aids problem right so hiv infection is uh linked to the jezebel or to prostitutes or hookies because right now it is saying that uh, then they are considered responsible for for the spread of uh, infectious diseases right and uh, it just says that uh, in the end she is only saying that as new media have entered uh you know as new media is there so you would uh, gradually find new images or you would keep seeing uh, changes in controlling images uh right now she is only saying that these media are uh, increasing or promoting uh, the controlling images because uh, because they are easily accessible okay so these uh, these images are actually circulated more and uh, black hip hop music industry and other music industry does continue promoting these images of hookies or misogyny in terms of um, uh, images of black women that uh, continues appearing more and more and many of these uh, images do emphasize on black adolescent pregnancy and parenting issues right all right any comment any uh any comment on how this uh, uh how this kind of images uh, imp- have an impact or what kind of in- impact they have on black feminist consciousness because uh, the article does show black feminist thought but it uh, it does say that uh, black feminist consciousness uh, should develop uh, objective condition of black women and warrants that development of a black feminist consciousness and uh, why black women fail to recognize the patterns of sexism and directly uh which 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 has a direct impact on their lives so patricia hill collins is only raising these questions that she, that she believes add to the abuses and uh, and the role these stereotypes play in their lives and the, the impact they have on their survival okay i think we have we are done for today please try reading the next article uh, the next one is on um, on misogyny and phylogeny uh, let me show you something uh, this can you see this page uh the course in google classroom it says misogyny phylogeny august 7 uh here i have not uploaded a complete article i think i will upload a complete article or a book on misogyny here as well if you want to read an article uh here what i have is uh, a number of abstracts 
abstracts of different articles on misogyny i would suggest that you try reading these articles uh in and try discussing the articles uh, the abstracts of the articles in the next class for example if uh, if amna's name is first in the list here it says amna wahid in the list and then it says amna iqbal i would say that amna wahid should read first abstract on this page right and amna iqbal should read the second article a second abstract right so if uh, these abstracts are not very long these are hardly one one page long or one and a half page long so the title of the first one is us too right so you may have heard of me too movement in which women are reacting in us too uh homosexuals or transgender it says same sex domestic violence so you can see that uh homosexuals are reacting and this movement is uh they're just saying us to so from me to to us to the first the first abstract actually points to the problems of homosexuals uh the second one here that i said amna iqbal should try reading it uh, points to a specific brand of nail polish i be, i think in colombia uh this brand uh, this this nail polish is marketed with names such as uh, uh rash slutty flirtatious uh controlling domineering etc so i'm just saying that each one of you should read one abstract from this uh from from this list uh as i said i have posted two files here i would suggest that uh, you just uh, think about your names in the alphabetical order and everyone should pick up just one abstract and try explaining what it says in next class okay okay ma'am okay. so that shouldn't be too difficult and in case you want to read an article i will be posting an article here as well but i do want in next class everybody should discuss one abstract okay ma'am okay ma'am Okay I think we are done for today if there is anything you want to ask discuss or say comment you can say now or if you are too tired we will end the session Yes I actually have a class so I I think I have to leave Okay sure um, you Thank start. you miss Okay thank you thank you everyone